All right, so that's all of the lighting wired up. Just a few things left. So if we come over to the status monitor here, we can see it has checkboxes for require water detectors and require oxygen detectors. So if we go into its wiring interface, we can see that there are spots for water data and oxygen data in. Uh, there's a lot of rooms, which would be a lot of water and oxygen detectors, so I usually just uncheck that box so that it will give oxygen and water data to the captain without any extra uh, detectors. I'll fix this wire real quick. And down here as well. Okay. We have a rogue light. Okay, so in order to make the sub AI compatible, we need waypoints. So if we go to generate waypoints, it will place all of these uh, points that the AI can use to recognize different parts of the ship. So first of all, this section of the railgun has collision. So we'll grab this. Uh, select this waypoint and drag it out of the way a little ways so that the AI doesn't try and clip through there. We'll move that one a little bit as well. Place that. Uh, the engine, if you f swim through the thrust of the engine it will damage you and can eventually kill you. So we'll give them a little bit of a buffer zone there. And than the nose of the ship. Okay, It doesn't have to be perfect, just enough that they can navigate around the ship like that. Okay, so then we need spawn points for the different people and that's going to be how we set the ID cards that we were looking at before. So we'll get rid of the waypoints and we'll grab spawn points. So you need a spawn point for one of each character and a spawn point for cargo. So uh, that way in campaign mode whenever you buy cargo at a station it knows where to put it. So we'll make this the cargo point and we need a spawn point for the captain. And So you assign the job and then you can set the tag. And For the captain we did id underscore captain We need one for the security officer. And for him we did ID security. Engineer. Mechanic. Medical doctor. And then the assistant. I usually just spawn them up near the cargo bay. We'll move that up a little bit to about there. I'm not entirely sure what Watchman is, and I do not believe as of now you can select it as a job so I don't bother creating a spawn point for that one so those are all of our spawn points if we go to holes we can see everything is selected the gaps are all good everything's linked together that has to be linked together uh, and our lighting is done inside the ship so we can provide external lighting I'm not going to do too much of that but if we grab the light components here they don't require any power so we can place one on either side of the hatch here. And it will make one red and one green. And we'll copy that and put it down here as well. Like that, and if we go back into lighting, lit up. 
the only other thing is you can change the values of these lights to make them a little less glaring. So if we go into lighting and do something like 100, 120, 150, alpha of 115, then the light has more of a grayish uh, tinge to it and it's a little less glaring white, but you can play around with that, figure out what feels best. All right, so I believe that concludes everything that's necessary for the ship to function. Uh, everything's wired up, but there's one other thing that I tend to add to the submarines I make, and that's just an ore component here. So the reactor, if it goes into meltdown, I like to have it automatically shut itself off. So we'll grab the meltdown warning and send it to this ore component. And we'll have this ore component go to the shutdown. All an ore component does is if either of the signals is a one, so positive, then it'll send a one out. So if the reactor is in a meltdown or if the captain decides to shut down the reactor, it'll shut down the reactor. And we'll have this say reactor shutdown. And then I'll fix the wiring. And the other thing I do is a um, discharge coil on the bottom. A discharge coil will electrify the sections of the hull around it, it uh, temporarily. It doesn't really do anything to bigger monsters, but smaller monsters that latch onto the hull and start breaking it along the bottom that are really hard to shoot, the coil will stun them and give the ship time to move so that these guns can get into position to take them out. Uh, and then this will discharge whatever it's connected to, and so to get a nice boost, I have it discharge the supercapacitors. And then the catch is, is that your guns will be uh, unaccessible until the those capacitors recharge. And then I set that to signal at 3, set that to say discharge coil. And then I will fix the wiring on that and be right back. All right, so that should be everything done that is required to make the ship run. From here, you have to determine how you want to stock it, and that's really an individual decision. But uh, in order to keep gameplay kind of balanced, you want to make sure you have supply cabinets around. And the way I, you've got six slots in the supply cabinets, so the way I usually do it is two bandages, a diving mask, welding tool, blood pack, flashlight, which I believe is either exactly or really close to what they are by default in the built-in submarines. And then the welding tool needs fuel, the mask needs oxygen, the flashlight needs a battery. So we'll get these in place. Then we'll grab the fuel. battery, and oxygen. And then now you can just copy paste this cabinet wherever you want it around the ship. So I usually put one in the major locations. And then tweaking where exactly they're placed and how high they are off the ground uh, can be done however you prefer. And then you can fill the medicine cabinet with whatever you think the doctor's going to need. And from there, I believe we are done. After a quick test, I did forget two things that we have to do. So the first is hop into character mode and turn on all of the ballast pumps. They do not automatically spawn turned on. They will be automatically controlled, but they have to be turned on 
uh, manually before you can actually do anything with them. And uh, again, we have textures not loading in properly. Okay. The other thing I forgot that's rather important is wiring up the velocity on the engine. So you're going to take the set force here over to velocity x out on the uh, navigation terminal. And then I'll modify the wiring. I'll come back over to the engine. Drag that up there. Okay. And with that, the ship is complete. Once you have completed the ship, you can go up to the Save button and hit Create to make an image. So sometimes the copy-paste function has problems and it doesn't spawn them within your view. And so you can see this image is zoomed out and we've got stuff off to the left of the ship. And here we can see a couple of walls and platforms spawned out here when we were doing copy-paste. So if we delete those, go back to Save, Create, now it's just focused on the ship. You can set your crew size here, the recommended experience, and give a description of your ship. And then when you hit save, you get the message across the top that it was saved. And it'll warn you if there are other items that were far away. In this case, we have some wires that ended up over here. And it gave us a warning about the vents. So if we get back over to the ship and open up our links, that we forgot to link the oxygen generator to the vent right next to it. Okay. So with that, if we save, create a new image, and everything went successfully without errors that time. So the ship is done, and now you are able to load it into a single player or multiplayer session, and it should work from there.